Hey, it's them! Akaba! Sawara! You're still here? Indeed we are! If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. We have time. What do you want to talk to us about? It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. Still looking for more info about Tatarasuna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. Hey, yo, I am not trying to read this again. I presume you'll want to read mine as well. Here. Please stop giving me your trash essay. Well, what do you think? Hey, Traveler. Remember how last time Akaba was saying how he wished he could gather more information about all this? Well, we just got back from Inazuma. So how about we tell them what we learned? What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... Wow, so many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, well, so it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh, you heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Ugh, so there's no ghost story here after all. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. And they're back at it. These guys are really into this. Oh, so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Will do. Nahida, we're here! Traveler, Paimon, how have you been? Ugh! Where to start? Paimon hasn't had a moment's rest this whole time. That night, we ended up chatting and chatting until suddenly, the sun was up. And then she decided she wanted to go to Inazuma. The Balladeer? Hmm. This sounds like some kind of code name. You look troubled. Is there something you need to tell me? Traveler? Hey, what's wrong? You look so upset.
Oh, looks like it's forcing me to come in with the voiceover, so... With a heavy heart, you piece back together the story that was broken and scattered across the time. There once was... We could have had a whole animation based off of this, but... There once was one... What? Named the Ballymore, created by the Electro Archon. British Archon. He was a puppet who lived among men. After a series of events in the, y'all know that place, the Baltimore thinking he had been thrice <laughs> betrayed, left Inazuma to roam the world, well, beyond, Ooh, I just woke up. With no trust for humans, and only loading, yeah, y'all got that word, for the gods, that should be uppercase, he warned? His grudge for years as he grew in strength, then returned to Inazuma to take his revenge. He tried in vain to become a whatever that word with the Gornus and ended up losing everything. Finally, he entered, you know that word, and learned the truth behind his betrayal, knowing now that his entire life was built on lies. He did the unthinkable in attempt to reverse his tragic fate. <sighs> That's quite a story. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermin's soul, hoping that he could change the past. But, how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermensoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. So, you believe this person really existed? And we just don't remember him because... Well... Because he literally changed the world? Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. That's why there's no information about her in Ermin's soul. And it also explains why any changes to Ermensoul wouldn't affect her. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's quite incredible when you think about it. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this Balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. I mean, he did say in his teaser, he no longer wishes to be here, but that was leading, that was due to his, I don't know if that was a friend or a family member, but it's, it's still, to me, it still doesn't make any sense why does he want to erase himself, and are we going to really see, like, a interaction with him in the Shogun, or a deeper story, maybe, hopefully. Something else worrying you? 
is something that you can't share? It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Once the balladeer realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that. And if he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. The story makes sense. Every part of it. The balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermansoul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermansoul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah, it does make sense, but it still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but it seems like he got nothing in return. Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Hmm. Found it. This should be the one. It turns out that... I have a strange way of confirming everything she has told us. What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. Is this... a fairy tale? Who wrote it? I authored this record myself. Huh? You... wrote a fairy tale? That somehow has something to do with the balladeer? When combined with the Traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Hold on, so this record survived from... the... past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Ermansoul. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler into Ermansoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew she'd remember everything. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one she told us. The now-erased life of the Balladeer. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night, and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. But the monster soon found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, 
They spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Even without a tail and fur like ours, you are still one of us. Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this. The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight! If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. We solved it! <sighs> I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to get rid of us on more than one occasion. So, I'm assuming his mother or the Shogun family abandoned him? And then somehow he became, I don't know, this puppet that became Tesla multiple times. Which, of, of, of course, if you're being used multiple times like that, you're going to feel numb to any amount of pain. Which equals why he does, he wants to erase his existence. But... He no longer wants to be Sparmouche, so he turned himself into the Wanderer to make him more of a better person? Is this what I'm comprehending correctly? Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke! The Balladeer agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders, and although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail. 
that Conria was where your twin first came into this world. We still don't know how the change to Ermin Soul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend. But the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth, and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Nahid is right. Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take her out for a walk to clear her head? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. <laughs>